Hey, what's up? Hope you are all safe and healthy. I just wanted to share some cool art stuff that I found around the internet recently. So I guess the theme of all this stuff I found is、uh, the mood of chill or ambience. Okay, let's get started. And as always, I'd love to hear your thoughts on what I got here. So the first thing I'd like to show you is actually a podcast hack. I like to listen to a lot of podcasts, and especially while you're working, if you like to do that too, but you find that just the spoken voice is a、uh, It's not quite enough for you. You can go onto YouTube. What I like to do is to get on here and find some、uh, future funk, lo-fi, or、uh, you know, city pop future funk mixes that people make, and you can just kind of play it in the background.、Uh, some people will take like all the peaceful chill music out of a video game soundtrack and and put it together. Then they'll also mix in the ambience. Uh, into the background too, so it's like you'll have three layers, a, a full production here with your podcast and a backtrack and some ambient sound beneath that as well. So here's an example. I like the, I like this one. I like the Giant Beast Cast. It's a video game journalism. I like listening to people talk about video games as art. Put that on. We got this nice Zelda backtrack here, and I'm just gonna lower the volume. Be pointing at the TV when the like Joy Cons would be perfect for like a spoon, or you know, I feel like the motion on the Joy Cons are generally pretty good. Like I keep thinking about it. I know y'all are big Mario Party heads. The latest Mario Party has a mini game where you have like. So this will keep you going through some, you know, tedious work. I think. Let me know if there's any other kind of ambient stuff. Uh, that you like to put on while you're doing work, or if there's anything else that I haven't thought about here. Here's something that's very satisfying and almost kind of meditative to watch.、Uh, this guy just builds zoids, but you gotta really appreciate the amount of tedium and the editing that just goes into the production of these videos. He makes a cut at every single snip and click, so that essentially all you're getting. Is the raw construction of the thing, and in in this particular video, he's building a Zoid. Okay, I got so much respect to this guy for the production value of this. It looks great. He's got a good camera, but more importantly, all those cuts and all those edits, man. Rote editing. This would absolutely destroy me. I want to mention that for all the stuff that I'm sharing, you can just、uh, look in the description for links to all of it. And if they are YouTube videos, typically most of them will be YouTube videos because I like YouTube. I, I'll add a I'll add a link to a playlist of just all the YouTube ones. Leave on autoplay, click through and check out. This is one of these very satisfying videos because you get to see the thing come together without doing. Any of the work. I don't know who's building these models for fun. This would be such a high stress activity for me. And even just listening to the noises, such pleasant sounding little crafty noises he's put together. This really makes me appreciate like all the craftsmanship and precision that goes into the assembling of、uh, even you know our consumer items that we use on day to day. This is definitely an underappreciated little corner of YouTube,、um, which are these people who make. What are called, I think, slow train videos. Basically, they'll put a camera into like in, in, into the front of the train, and they'll just have it go the entire time. Now, normally the video quality for slow train videos aren't aren't great, but this one I found、uh, is is pretty good. Let's see where it goes. So this is just like a three-hour video of this train rolling through Japan、uh, and the countryside, and you can find ones for. Trains,、uh, tracks, and routes all around the world,、uh, and there's something just so chill about being in the cabin and watching this train slowly roll through the countryside of Japan. I also find that、uh, like train noises are great ambience and absolutely will just knock me out as a soundscape. You know? So that's that. Share with me some good train routes if you know of any.、Uh, this is a great way for poor people like me to see the world. Now, if we go just a bit farther down the rabbit hole, we'll find some people who do these like night walk videos. They're pretty cool. I th- think they're people who usually have like a pretty decent camera and a gimbal, 
and they'll just like walk through an interesting place like this guy's just in japan um walking through the back alleys of uh east shinjuku and you get to see what it's like to do that at night so from what i remember shinjuku and shibuya are two more well-known nightlife districts in japan and clearly this guy's not on the main strip which is which isn't the point but he's showing us what it's like going down the off paths and the back routes of this district my favorite thing to do when i was in japan was just the people watch to watch people live their lives in a different way and to see how how people on the other side of the world from where i am in canada when you're walking through a commercial district, you get a bit of an innocent voyeuristic glimpse of how these people live their lives. It's this little vignette into their lives that gives me perspective as to how to better navigate my own, I think. My biggest realize is that pe people are weirdly chill about this dude with like a big ass gimbal and like a SLR <laughs> camera walking down the streets. They're paying him really no mind. And I think that's a pretty interesting. <laughs> I think Japan's just, at this point, they're really just used to tourists with their big cameras, so this this really isn't nothing new. So, can we go any deeper? Yes, we can. Look up natural ambience on YouTube, and you'll find these soundscapes that people make. I really like this one person who kind of makes, who makes these soundscapes of these, like, fantasy settings. Like, swamp sounds at night. You want to hear some of that? I think she did one called Magic Tea House. Oh, the magic. Oh. Maybe you want to feel like you're in a magical tea room. Hello there, my merchant goblin friend. What brings you here today? So this girl, Miracle Forest, does a lot of cool fantasy soundscapes. You want to check out the room in the clouds? You want to you wanna be in your underwater hotel? All I can think of here is Bioshock. And of course, for all the weebs like me, we got some Tokyo apartment ambience with music muffled chatter street sounds and a live wallpaper you don't say i really do think that uh, having a motion background even though you're not completely using your computer for this stuff or you've got another tab open it's still nice to have some sort of you know background visual in the same sense that we appreciate background noise. I think people do also appreciate this idea of non-distracting background visuals. Now, if you're into ASMR at all, there's a great community on YouTube who, I, I don't know how they're getting these videos. Do they sift through a database of every video that's ever existed or just PBS programming? Um, they find all these unintentional ASMR moments and they, 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 they put them together. If you're, if you're not familiar with ASMR, it's basically like, I, I don't remember, it stands for something, but it's, it's basically the weird tingly sensations you get when, when Bob Ross speaks to you in the way that he does. I'll use a two inch today. Pull it through the paint, wiggling it. See, wiggle it. Look at that, super sharp. Let's decide, maybe there's a happy tree, evergreen tree. He lives right there, start with just Touching the canvas, use just the corner of the brush, just the corner, and begin pushing, making the bristles bend slightly downward. See there? It, it happens quite quite unintentionally. Some, sometimes the most authentic ASMR moments are the ones that come to us unintentionally. You remember the times, for me, as a kid, when a teacher is explaining something in a, with a particular cadence, with a particular tone. People have all these dormant ASMR triggers that we're, we're, we're totally unaware of because it's such a such a strange phenomenon that that society hasn't paid much attention to. I feel like I, there was a trend on the internet where people were making kind of ASMR parodies at one point. Um, I know it was popular on YouTube to make like 
just n uh, ASMR videos for any channel. They would just put a video of them, you know, doing their thing, but without them speaking, just the noises of them doing work. Let me show you the 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 god of unintentional ASMR. So this is John Butler. Even just look at this guy's face. You have to agree with me. He's like the godfather of ASMR. Accidental ASMR. He is the architect of this thing. He's the progenitor. He loved carpentry. He taught me how to use tools. And I remember so well him saying, pay attention. Keep your eye on what you're doing. When you're sawing a piece of wood, listen and watch. Thank God for whoever gave this guy a good lav mic. The internet thanks you. Man, I promise you I could not walk through that room without just dropping dead of a nap attack. I wonder if this man goes through life with, with, with an aura of putting people at peace and calm and being centered. This is a really great channel that I know I'll come back to at some point. Uh, healthy Gamer GG. This guy is Dr. K. He's like, he's a psychologist. But he also studied, he also studied like spiritualism in India. He's a practicing psychologist and he's also a gamer. So I don't know about you, but this is like the father, son, holy ghost. You know what I mean? Like normally, you know, those memes where it's like, you can be really good at, you can, you can work hard at your job. You can be good at your job or you'd be cool to work with. You know, you can't be all three, but you can be two out of three. And that's all you need. You know, this guy, this guy is kind of like that meme where you, you can't possibly be these three things that seem to be so separate from each other. But he, I, by the way, I do think that like, personally, I don't feel that like, you know, psychology and, and spirituality and philosophy are so different from each other. I think they're just different means of approaching and, uh, and problem solving the same thing. But I, I do think that people will see this guy as an absolute anomaly of a practitioner. Um, he works with people one-on-one -on -one and sometimes he facilitates groups as well. And you get to see the entire conversation of how he would guide someone through he would guide someone through having some very uh very relatable and contemporary problems you know specifically with the gamer crowd that's a, that's a that's a niche that he likes to work with i think that the gamer crowd is really just like in this day and age it's just like the internet crowd if you're not like an internet person you're quite honestly in 2020 you're kind of like being left behind right but as a result of kind of being hyper-connected, um, our brains start to change for better and for worse, you know, and, and we're not quite equipped to deal with the for worse. So he kind of helps people navigate that, and I think it's really interesting. This one I watched, How to Deal with the Burden of Potential. I, I think you had kind of this illusion of what your life was going to be like that was based on false expectation, and so that's only going to lead to disappointment. If everyone tells you that a movie is going to be super awesome and then you go and you watch it, what's going to happen? Mm -hmm. Like, how are you going to enjoy the movie? Like, what do you think? Your experience is going to be diminished. Absolutely. Because right? it has to live up to those expectations. If I gave you a blueprint for a shack and I gave you a blueprint for a mansion, which one has more potential? Which one is harder to build? The mansion. Absolutely. So this is the biggest mistake that people make about potential. They think that potential, because potential is a mansion, right? That's what potential is. Like the very definition mm -hmm. is a blueprint of what you could be in life. The biggest mistake that people make is that they think that potential makes their life easy when in fact it makes your life hard. Potential is a burden. It is a burden for greatness and it is a burden of success. But it requires so much more effort than having low potential. It was very powerful for me. There's one where he talks to a group of uh, gamers who are um, who are all doomers, and I do I really do feel like that sometimes. So the first thing is that I th I think the biggest problem is that we were led to believe something that is actually incorrect. And so I think the real challenge here is that we've had to figure out, and I don't think anyone has really. I mean, we we're doing this, but I don't think anyone has. I don't think many people stop and really think a little bit about the fact that. We have to find our own way forward in this. We're not gonna find an answer from somewhere else because those answers just don't work anymore. 
he really kind of made some breakthroughs with someone else with their like incel dumb, which is which is pretty crazy because I do think that that's so tricky and also so fascinating all at the same time. So I can't elaborate too much on healthy gamer GG uh, Dr. K because I think he just does it best himself. He's a great resource and he's a great point of entry if you feel like you need if you feel like you're interested in or have a or have a curiosity uh, into these kinds of things. It's really cool to see someone like him try to navigate these uncharted waters in the YouTube space and he I think he's quite successful at it. Okay, being the weeb that I am, I'll uh, I'll, I'll talk about anime sure. So Japan's really interesting because they have a lot of these like weirdly specific terms for things that we wouldn't quite bother to categorize. Uh, one of which is this thing called yashike, and it's uh, according to Google is a sub genre of slice of life anime that is designed to have a healing effect on the viewer. Um, yashike anime are typically episodic, have little to no conflict, and showcase the characters' peaceful lives. Already, I really like the slice of I like the genre of slice of life anime because it. Um, if I were to try and sell this to other people, I'd say that in concept, it's very similar to the philosophy of Seinfeld, in that it's kind of about nothing. Do you know the difference between salsa and salsa? You have the salsa after the salsa. <laughs> this should be the show. This is the show. What? Yes. Just talk. Just talking? Well, what's the show about? It's about nothing. <laughs> no story? No, forget the story. You gotta have a story. Who says you gotta have a story? Remember when we were waiting for, for that table in that Chinese restaurant that time? That could be a TV show. Everybody's doing something. We'll do nothing. So we go into NBC, we tell them we got an idea for a show about nothing. Exactly. They say, what's your show about? I say nothing. There you go. I think you may have something here. <laughs> Especially from when I was a teenager, I was already into the slice of life genre because I I felt like it it was it was a, a bit of a panacea for my anxiety. It also calls attention to these more more mundane aspects of life, these these moments that kind of basically the little things, you know. And you hear so much that you need to focus on the little things because because all you have in life is just a a, a collection of the little things. And when we look too much into the big things, into desiring the big things, one day we'll wake up with three big things um, and we'd be 80 years old, right? There just aren't enough big things in life to make it worth living exclusively for those things. I think slice of life anime really helped me realize, uh, really helped me realize how, just how, um, how creative and special the little things were because this is a genre that almost exclusively focuses and has an agenda to, to flourish those things visually for you. Getting back on track, I'm not an expert of Yashike anime, but if you were to just look it up on YouTube... Yashike, a Japanese term meaning healing, is used to describe anime or manga created with a specific purpose of having a healing or soothing effect on the audience. Now, I'd rather make like a more focused video on on the the subgenre of yashike in anime. But uh, if you want just a nice overview, you can you can watch any of the top results for video essays that that come up when you when you YouTube it. I think that especially in the times that we're in now, having content that's specifically focused on a brand of storytelling that's meant to help you realize how special the smaller things in life are um, and as the name suggests having content that's meant to heal you <laughs> like I know it definitely sounds weird coming from a guy like me but I think I think this idea of um, like holistic appreciation and uh, self-care in a lot of these shows is certainly worth looking into if you feel like you need that in your life right now the thing to keep in mind with starting a new show or venturing into new content is that you never need to feel committed, right? If you're not having fun, you can just drop it at any point in time at all. Just stop. At the end of the day, all of the content 
you're consuming um, uh, should be for you in one way or another. This is the last video I'm sharing, and this is a weird one. It's It popped up in my recommended one day on YouTube. Just a thumbnail. It was just it just looked like this. This is the random Japanese letters and this thumbnail of what looks like uh, a loosely dense bramble wall uh, against just an infinite sc scrolling sky. It's so weird because I would just as soon as I hit it this really strange song came up and I just felt compelled to listen to it. It's a really beautiful and atmospheric song that kind of just put me to peace in a very strange way. One could say that it uh, made me chill. The, the comment section entirely is filled with really strange and profound things of people who are also sharing in the mystery and, and the fascination of the, the mood that this song is creating for them. It's making them speculate and introspect and contemplate on on the bigger things, you know, the essential things in their lives. The funniest part of all of, all of this, that this song is from, <laughs> is from Donkey Kong Country 2. It's what is it? I think it's this one, Aquatic Ambience. But it, it's such a s strange track. Um, I just want to read out a few of my favorite comments here. There's a lot of lore and mystery to this song where other people also shared. As soon as I hit the comments section, you see shit like, if this was on your recommended, consider yourself a main character on Earth. Only the chosen get this recommended. People kind of... I really encourage you to just kind of dig through the comments for this video. It's the one with 3.4 million views. This was profound to me when I first read it. He says, Everyone's saying this is the end of the internet? You fools. This is just a checkpoint. People are sharing profound and personal things about themselves. And the general vibe to all of this is that it, it, it always ends on an upswing. It's always in the sense of... It's always in service of something positive people have called this video the end of the internet you've you, you've dove so deep down youtube rabbit holes that you've just ended at this one place where it feels like there's just a limitless sky beneath a wall of loose loosely dense bramble thorns and you're so close to to infinity but you know you can't be there, right? You know that, you know that infinity next to what <laughs> you feel like to me that the infinity next to to what I what what I can possibly humanly comprehend, infinity might as well be nothing to me. Uh, like we're meant to stay here, you know. Um, we are all main characters. People have called this a checkpoint on the internet, where they've stopped called the checkpoint and begin telling a story of themselves something very personal and uh i don't <laughs> i don't know finding this means you've hit the border of the website save progress up to this point yes no <laughs> are you sure you want to overwrite existing game data yes no i don't know i I love this comment so much. Everyone on YouTube makes a pilgrimage here, someday. <gasps> the Japanese person that posted this video is probably thinking Westerners are nuts commenting their life issues on a Donkey Kong Country 2 song. And it's true, the comment section has changed so much from when I first discovered this. It was a lot of like, kind of profound existential memeing going on in the comments, but, but now it's become, I'm seeing a lot of these checkpoint comments where people people state the checkpoint and then they just kind of talk about what's going on in their lives checkpoint well this is kind of dumb but i'm gonna do it it's 1 24 a.m i'm searching some videos on the internet and i stumbled upon this thing i'm trying to complete half-life i'm just a dumb 15 year old kid 
right now, and I hope that everything goes fine in the near future. Arthur V. September 9th, 2020. I really like this, and I, you know what? I don't, I don't believe, I don't believe in the curse, or, or the lore of the video, where you need to find this thing on your own. I just don't believe that that's how life works either. I, I think you can send a friend this video. You can share with someone this sacred, profound thing like I'm sharing to you right now. And I think it's it's just as valid. You can probably see that I'm having just such a difficult time um, like explaining or trying to describe my feelings about this video or about the video itself, quite honestly. I, I was thinking about this last night, and I think that I finally kind of came to something conclusive um, in regards to my opinions on this. I, I think that in a strange way for, for the very first time that I've noticed, I think our plight has kind of been reflected back at us, you know. Plight in a, in a big sense of our search for a meaning and existence. Um, this thing to me is profound, significant and ineffable. I feel like that's our plight being reflected back onto us, or onto me at least, you know, uh, how desperately we try to search for meaning, for significance, and all of humanity's efforts to describe things, to understand things, right? And, and here I'm finally confronted with all of that in the form of a YouTube video. Um, I'm trying to understand it, I'm trying to describe it, while all at the same time I realize how profound it is. And I just can't do all of those things, but I can still accept it. And maybe that's the answer to the, the plight of humanity. For the profound, significant, and ineffable plight of humanity, um, is it, it's something that we will never quite have all the answers to, but it's something that we can just as easily accept and appreciate as a as a piece of art as a cool art thing yo this girl's doing photography tutorials in animal crossing animal crossing animal crossing